Welcome again to Willowbank Raceway at Ipswich in Queensland. If you like your racing wild, you're in the right place today. It's the Coca-Cola Australian Wild Bunch titles. Supercharged sedan drivers from Darwin to Canberra are here to fight out the title over three rounds of handicap racing. And that's not all. How about two huge V8 engines, two superchargers, four turbochargers, plus nitrous oxide, all in one vehicle? Paul Casos is over with what's got to be the wildest of them all. Wild's an understatement, Rob, when we look at Frank Gaffero's awesome Bandag Bullock drag racing truck. Now, not only is this the fastest truck racing in Australia today, but Frank has a reputation for the most unbelievable burnouts in the business. When he was here last year, we saw him get so radical, not only did he blow the cooling system, but also wore some holes in the track. He topped that recently in Western Australia when things got so hot, the mudguards caught fire. Hopefully, things won't go that far today, but I'm sure Frank will live up to his wild man tag. The Coca-Cola Wild Bunch? The Bandag Bullet? Let's throw in some pro stock as well. Tanya Campbell, what's in store for us today? The Wreckers Hotline Pro Stock Invitational will pit the current championship leader Rob Tucker in the Performance Wholesale Oldsmobile up against an extremely tough field. There's Craig Haystead, Queensland's fastest Ford, the Craig R Performance Usher Construction's Thunderbird. And a big crowd pleaser is Kim Pedward in the Lifestyle Pontiac. He's running a new Polito race engine, which is really making some horsepower. And rounding out the four, John O'Carney. Now he was runner up at the Australian Championships last year, and he's a real contender in the John Williams Auto Sales Pontiac. All races will contest two rounds, with the top two competitors going through to the finals. There's going to be some really tough racing out there tonight, Rob. Thanks, Tanya. I wouldn't like to pick a winner in that one, but you can be a winner. All you've got to do is settle back, strap yourself in and head for the winner's circle in Wreckers Hotline, Drag Racing 98. Getting underway now with round one of the Coca-Cola Australian Wild Bunch titles. Uh, that's the 34 Ford Hot Rod, the pink stuff car of Kevin Campbell. And he'll be up against Daryl Woods in the supercharged Ford Falcon. Two of the local runners in the Australian Wild Bunch titles tonight. But of course we've got competitors from as far away as Canberra and Darwin have headed for Willowbank Raceway to take part in what is really the first ever Australian Wild Bunch titles. So Kevin Campbell, the car he races in partnership with uh, Bob Scott, taking on the Ford Falcon. And of course the Australian Wild Bunch titles run on the handicap system. The racers nominate their own dial-in or handicap time, then it's a run to the uh, finish line. Campbell looks good across the line, 8.19 seconds, 198 kilometres an hour, and the crew quite enjoy that one. Yeah, good race there with the 34 taking it out as uh, the next pairing to come forward, Andrew Searle driving the Ford Custom Line, taking on Dave Wallace, and this is the uh, Holden Commodore from the Brisbane Drive Shaft sponsorship. Wallace with a big block uh, Chevy up front of the Commodore and of course Andrew Searle, the car built for top door slammer. Now with a, a big kit black aluminium engine up front, the uh, car modelled pretty closely after the Castrol Commodore of, uh, that was driven by Troy Critchley, now Michael King. Looks like Wallace has got a problem in the Brisbane Drive Shaft's car. He's pushed back and uh, also some problems there for Andrew Searle, fairly untidy. He'll just uh, pedal it through, but he picks up the win anyway. Yeah, a win's a win, and uh, Andrew Searle, uh, we'll see him back a little later on. This is Lindsay Churchill out of New South Wales making a welcome return to Willowbank Raceway. Lindsay with a lot more horsepower on board than he ever had before. He's facing off against Tom Coonan in the Holtz Cranes Hire uh, Ford LTD down from Toowoomba. Lindsay, it's been a while since you've been here at Willowbank, and it's good to see you back. Followed by fourth in the Wild Bunch, but Wild Bunch field. Looking forward to tonight's meeting. My word, we certainly are. Yeah, we um, like you say, it's been a couple of years, but we always have a good time up here, and it's a great track to race. Lindsay Churchill, really one of the wild men of the Wild Bunch. Really is taking on this time Tom Coonan from Toowoomba. The LTD gets away well. Lindsay Churchill to chase him. Here comes the 57 Chevy. Through he goes, Churchill, 738, 244 kilometres an hour. Matt Abel now in the Abel, Kyle and Capri, all the way from Darwin in the Northern Territory, up against John Payne in the JP Racing Corvette. And John Payne took part in the very first ever Australian Wild Bunch meeting here at Willowbank Raceway, and I think it was about 10 or 11 years ago. 
have been running in uh, yeah, I can't really recall a uh, wild bunch meeting here at Willowbank Raceway that John Payne hasn't been part of a long way to tow a race car though from Darwin and uh, Matt Abel uh, he really wants to go home a winner tonight let's see how he goes taking on John Payne Abel has been running in the seven second zone there's not a real lot of handicap start in this one the crew just getting the safety pin out of the uh, parachute in time Handicap start to Abel there. John Payne starts to chase him down and Payne in control fairly early as uh, Abel had to shut it off and Payne 760, 258 kilometres hour. He was pretty safe on that. Two local competitors now. Les Winter driving the winner smash repairs 55 Chevy and uh, taking on in the lane beside him John Moll driving the Holden Commodore. Les Winter has had a few problems this afternoon. The car, a lot of horsepower, but hasn't had wanted to handle all that well. We planed it down a little bit um, in qualifying this afternoon. We were trying to get a baseline for the Winter Nationals, but the air and the conditions aren't quite good enough today, so we'll tame it down for the first round. A number of competitors taken the opportunity here tonight to uh, tune up for the Winter Nationals, but uh, Les Winter, let's see how he goes. Had a good season uh, on Winter Nationals last year, in fact. Rob, I think he was runner-up. He was runner-up in um, Super Performance Top Door Slammer last year at the Conica Winter Nationals. I think he'd love to go one better this year. But uh, as I say, he has to just get that Chevy tamed down a little bit. Have a look at Mole. He gets a handicap start. He's out of shape. Winters is... Oh, I thought they were going to rub door handles for a while there. Les Winters is... Uh, well, he's not going anywhere. John Mole says, I'll take the win. So uh, we'll see them both back a little later on tonight. But uh, on the line now, this is Scott Leo. And uh, the competition performance and SL Race Fabrications Commodore taking on from New South Wales, Alfie Sabello and Alfie's Prestige Panels BMW. Sabello really has been pushing this BMW 850 today, running very close to personal bests right through qualifying. In fact, he's ended up the number one qualifier. It's a great feeling to be a uh, top qualifier and we come up here to sort of get to that position and we're really happy that we are. Commodore, what a magnificent race car this one is, Alfie Sabello immaculately prepared in his workshop in Sydney and uh, certainly uh, quite a, uh, a different race car. Scott Leo of course in the SL Race Fabrications Commodore he uh, had a win over the Castrol New Year Series I think at the January event in Top Comp Eliminator. Now he's out to try and make his mark in uh, the Coca-Cola Australian Wild Bunch title. All these guys want to be the first Australian title holder in Wild Bunch. It's an unofficial category, not part of Andrew Championship Racing, but with a strong following right across the country. So both cars are stays, away they go. Scott Leo's running well. Alfie Sabello, the top qualifier, running up beside him. We'll wait and see who gets there first. It's Scott Leo, 779, 250 kilometres. We've got a breakout situation there. Sabello runs quicker than his uh, handicap time. He's disqualified. Now it's the burnout king, Frank Gaffiro in the Van Dag Bullet. Paul, we heard what you said about his burnouts before, but really there's no one like the master, is there? No, fans here at Willowbank Raceway certainly haven't forgotten the last time Frank was here and the big burnouts, and uh, look what he's doing for us here tonight, just really lining up those tyres on this truck. Yeah, it's a good crowd of, uh, I think, around 5,000 in to see Frank tonight, and they are enjoying it, uh, all packed up there near the start line, but really, one of the popular guys. Yeah, it certainly is. Well, here at Willow Bank Raceway, we always enjoy a visit from Frank Gaffiro and the band Dag Bullet. Now, the last time he was here, I was lucky enough to get a seat beside him and be his passenger for a run. And tonight, I believe, Frank, that's going to go to somebody else. Yes, Tanya, tonight um, they're actually picking somebody from the crowd to come for a drive in the truck. So I guess um, if they get as excited as you did last year, they're going to get a thrill. And that'll be happening in the uh, second round or second appearance of the Bandag Bullet for the evening. But uh, hey, it's the show quality of this truck is unbelievable. The burnouts are fantastic. But the bottom line is, it's eight tonnes of truck. Have a look at it leave the start line. It gets moving pretty quickly. 24 litres it is, two V8 engines, and it's pretty quick. Absolutely. Let's wait and see how he goes this run and goes through in a 12.90, 182 kilometres an hour.
away now with uh, Rekers Hotline Postock Challenge and uh, John O'Carney in the John William Auto Sales Pontiac taking on the Ford Thunderbird of Craig Hastead, the Craig Performance uh, Thunderbird. And Rob, this car has been running some personal bests at recent meetings. Certainly has. Hastead was what you'd call, I guess, a struggler. Used to battle to get into the pro stock field. He qualified, uh, well, at one stage was number one qualifier at the Nationals. Here this weekend for the Wreckers Hotline Pro Stock Invitational, he's seen as a real threat. Up against O'Carney, number two in the country last year. Haystead's got him, 783, 274, a fantastic pass. Yeah, good pass there, and uh, he'll be pretty pleased with that one. The crew uh, certainly are, and uh, moving on now to the next pairing to come for. This is Rob Tucker, the Performance Wholesale Oldsmobile, and uh, taking on Rob Tucker will be Kim Pennerwood. Tucker, of course, is the current leader in the Australian Pro Stock Championship, just 45 points in front of Joe Polito. Both these guys looking for an edge before the Conica Winter Nationals. Yeah, we're here to test to get into that really tough um, uh, field that's going to be here on, at the Winter Nationals. So we're hoping we're going to be in there, but um, uh, tonight we've just got to try a few things and uh, make sure we, we try and secure a spot in there. So both of these guys, seasoned competitors here at Willowbank Raceway. It's been a good season for Rob Tucker in Pro Stock and uh, Kim Petterwood uh, to take him on this time. There's uh, Rob Tucker waiting there. The, it's a pro start, of course. Uh, one flash in the amber, they're gone. The, the pre-stage lights are on. Just waiting now for Tucker to move it in. The Pro Stock guys think you'll need something like a 782 to even get in the field at the Conoco Internationals. That's why they're so keen to race here. Tucker comes on 781 to 77.9 kilometres an hour. Hi, I'm Tony Wedlock, driver of the High Tech Oz Pro Stock Pontiac. I'm looking forward to catching up with all of you at the 1998 Conoco Winter Nationals. Moving on now to Kenlo Race Car Super Eliminator Round 4 and it's David Goldie driving the Pacific Performance Holden Monaro taking on that magnificent looking uh, Holden Calais of Rob Beecham. Isn't it incredible Paul, we're in Round 4 of uh, Kenlo Race Car Super Eliminator and it's only the quarterfinals. These guys have already done three uh, rounds of racing. There was 64 entries in this bracket. I think about 55 or 56 made it into the first round after some carnage in qualifying. Just to get to the quarterfinals has been a marathon. Now they're going uh, head to head to try and move towards that semi-final berth. It's handicap racing again. Uh, the dial-ins do apply. You run quicker than that, you break out. But you've got to say that Beecham and Goldie are two of the best in the business. Yeah, get away to a good start and uh, Goldie's out there in front. Uh, Beecham will do the chasing. Goldie's going well. We'll wait and see who gets there first. Dave Goldie at 991, 196 kilometres an hour. And there was about the tread of a tyre in that. A real top end charge on the replay. Have a look at the Calais come on strong. Just lasting out was David Goldie. Cameron Hill now driving his uh, 350 Chevy powered Holden Tirana and his first full race meeting in fact in this car so it's a, it's a big night uh, for the yellow Tirana taking on Ian Fitzgerald, the Headsense Dragster. Yes, uh, Kenlo Race Car Super Eliminator, it's a combination of cars from Modified Eliminator, Super Sedan. If you've uh, got four wheels and can run quicker than 10.99 seconds, you can qualify into this uh, particular category. That's why there were so many starters. Now it's a case of who's going to the sem semi-finals. Is it the rookie in the Tirana or Ian Fitzgerald, who I think is leading the Kenlo Racecar's modified eliminator point score? Well, the Tirana's going well. The dragster to chase. Clean but... greens. The dragster comes on strong and breaks out. Runs quicker than his nominated handicap time. Cameron Hill, the winner. Continues on his winning way is Juan Kutnik. Now, uh, what can he do this time round? The CCR Commodore taking on the Jaguar. Jason Grimmer from Sydney driving that Chevrolet-powered Jaguar. This should be a fantastic battle. Jason Grimmer is the reigning Super Sedan Australian champion. Juan Kutnik won the Super Street Championship, I think, three years in a row. Now, took a season off to uh, build this new Commodore for Super Sedan. He's back this season. He would like to take the title away from Jason Grimmer at the Conica Winter Nationals. Here they are, just uh, a few weeks short, and whoever comes out on top here is going to have a huge psychological battle going into that Conica Winter Nationals on the Queen's birthday weekend. Juan Kutnick would have to be the favourite for this race. Uh, being the local, uh, he really takes the, uh, the atmospheric 
conditions into consideration, the track temperature and everything like that. But uh, let's see how he goes. The Jaguars doing the chasing. The Commodore's going well. Watch this Jaguar start to get its legs at the bottom end, starting to come on strong. Three thousandths of a second too quick for Kudnig. The win will go to Jason Grimmer. So the Jaguar was the winner tonight and uh, moving along now, the Bandag, this is it, the, the uh, truck the fans have come out to see, Frank Gaffero. And one of the fans with a real close look, there he is in the passenger seat, uh, uh, won a raffle out of the crowd for a ride in the Bandag bullet, a uh, 22 year old from Bracken Ridge I think he is, and <laughs> hey, he's having a ball in there. Look, I know that uh, last time it was here, Tanya Campbell, one of our co-commentators, had a ride. She hasn't stopped talking about it since then, so I can imagine what uh, this race fan here tonight will say. Look at the smoke screen laid down by Frank Gaffiro and the Bandag Bullet. Look at this for the burnout. Have a look at it. Sits there, starts to smoke the tyres. It is doing it about 2,000 RPM, I'd say, which is a lot for a uh, two big diesel engines, but unbelievable the amount of smoke that it can generate from those Bandag tyres. Hey, they uh, take a licking, but they keep on going. You couldn't really get a better advertisement for those Bandag tyres than on this truck. And as you said, they just get a hell of a thrashing there, and uh, Frank does it so well. So let's see his time this time, winding it up down the quarter mile as the truck goes on through with a passenger, 1280, 182 kilometres an hour. We apologise if you've had problems contacting our Wreckers Hotline competition line on previous shows. But the good news is our technical difficulties have been rectified. To celebrate, on today's show, Autobahn will make one viewer very happy. This time with a Pioneer car CD tuner valued at around $500. Autobahn, of course, are the specialist in car audio. For your chance to win, just call the number on the screen before noon on Thursday and your car could be sounding better than ever thanks to Autobahn, Pioneer, and Wreckers Hotline Drag Racing 98. The Conica Winter Nationals has grown into a 10-day carnival in Ipswich with the city going motorsport crazy. It all kicks off on Saturday, May 30th with vehicle displays throughout the city. Ipswich businesses get right behind the winners with stores decorated in Winter National colours from top to bottom. Sunday the 31st, Ipswich Westmorton Auto Club races short circuit touring cars at Willowbank and Ipswich Kart Hire sees the Bevfest Street Machine show and shine and sound off in Celebrity Karting Challenge. Tuesday night is the Winter National Slot Car Drag Racing at the Ipswich Raceway, while Wednesday night Craig Lowndes heads up a star-studded guest list at the Queensland Times Motorsports Award at the Ipswich Civic Centre. The kids take to the streets of Ipswich on Thursday night for the annual Billy Cart Bash and fireworks and there's also a charity auction of motorsport memorabilia. Of course, Friday the 5th of June sees that all the action start at Willowbank Raceway with day one of the Conica Winter Nationals. Qualifying starts at 12 and hots up Friday night with all of the Group 1 classes, including Top Fuel. Saturday starts early at 9 with the Nestle qualifying Night of Thunder kicking off at 5 o'clock. This will be a fantastic show with all of the professional categories from Pro Bright Bike to uh, Top Fuel running twice throughout the evening. Then of course it's on to Sunday, race day at the Conica Winter Nationals. The early action gets underway at 12 and the main program from 5. Whatever you do, don't miss this, the greatest drag racing event in Australia. We're all certainly looking forward to the Conica Winter Nationals, but now back to the action in the Coca-Cola Australian Wild Bunch titles. John Moll was to face, I think, Scott Leo. He hasn't been able to come back for this second round, so Moll will uh, score a win. But all competitors are eligible to come back, and the way it works is the top two point scorers go into the final. Moll will get a win here. That'll give him two from two. But on a count back, you have to be the closest, uh, one of the closest two races to your nominated handicap time. That's why Moll's going to drive it through pretty close. 
773. He's only, what, uh, six thousandths of a, six hundredths of a second. John Mole, two wins from two rounds, mate. Maximum points going into the Wild Bunch final. Mate, you feel confident with the car now that she's back in the sevens? Uh, yes, mate, yeah. The car's had a few little bugs here and there the last few meetings, but she's finally proven itself now, I think. So the Holden this time taking on the Ford. It'll be Dave Wallace driving the Brisbane drive shafts. Holden Commodore taking on Darrell Woods in the Falcon. Well, neither of these guys got a win in the first round, so they're uh, really only in with a very outside chance of making the final, but they're here to put on a great show and see if they uh, can get on top of the combinations. Wallace, of course, had to shut down in the first round in the Brisbane drive shafts and balancing service car, but sounded nice and strong in the burnout. Darrell Woods in the Ford. This is the good old classic Ford versus Holden battle. And it's all happening in the Coca-Cola Australian Wild Bunch titles. Yeah, it's really what the fans like to see and uh, certainly cheer on their favourite make out here tonight. The Holden, uh, a little bit of strife there. Dave Wallace uh, shutting it uh, down. But the Ford Falcon will go through for the win. 8.57, 227 kilometres an hour. Next two races are in the same boat. Actually, Tom Coonan on, in the Holtz Cranes uh, Ford LTD along with Matt Abel in the Abel Tile in Capri from Darwin. Neither of these guys put uh, the win points on the board in the first round, so all they can do is try and pick up a win here and run smack on their dial in and uh, hope for a miracle, I guess. Yeah, the uh, Wild Bunch Racing, of course, always a popular form out here at Willow Bank Raceway. It really was the home of Wild Bunch Racing. This is where it all started and uh, really flocking out here tonight, both the competitors and the fans, to see the cars back in action. So the two Fords, the LTD taking on the Ford Capri. It's our friend from Darwin. One way to come, as we said earlier, Matt Abel. Coonan and Abel edging forward into the lights. They will be trying to run it hard. There's not much of a handicap start in this one, but Abel couldn't wait long enough. He's left a red light on the tree. Charges for the line, looks fast. Personal best, actually, but Coonan gets the win with an 8-1-3. Churchill from Sydney driving the 57 Chevy taking on Kevin Campbell in the 34 Ford. Well these two guys have got wins on the board from the first round. They're in a uh, position to win a spot in that final. We've already got uh, John Mole sitting down in the braking area. Two wins from two starts. Uh, he ran six hundredths of a second away from his dial in. So you'd think he'd be in a pretty good spot. Whoever wins here to be sure of a spot in the final needs to run closer than that 600s away from their nominated handicap time. A lot of work gone into the 34 uh, over, I guess, uh, the last few months or so and really stepping up in performance. So this is one of the cars to watch here tonight. Kevin Campbell at the wheel. The car he races with Bob Scott. Keep an eye on the uh, car of uh, Lindsay Churchill's in the left-hand lane, the 57 Chevy. In the first round of racing, picked the front wheels up at half track on the gear shift. Incredible amount of power. Campbell's out in front and he's done it again as Churchill, this is close. Churchill breaks out. These guys are all going quicker tonight. Kevin Campbell, the win. New sponsor on board tonight. We've got Reliable Auto Care and Exhaust. They've joined our other sponsors on the car. Mate, these New South Wales guys, they're giving us curry here tonight. Eh? This Lindsay Churchill knows how to drive, but double breakout pass. Um, mate, it means we've run a personal best with the car today too. So, mate, Bob Scott should be here any minute. He's going to be doing cartwheels, mate. Hopefully with the count back, we're going to have the points to be in the final. And, mate, we're really looking to kick a bit of butt because this has become a three-day event. Friday was welcoming them in. Tonight we're going to flog them. Tomorrow we're going to send them home. So we'll see you in the final, guys. Thanks very much. Chris Diggle's down there to do the interview, but I don't think Kev Campbell gave him a chance to get a word in. Uh, very confident indeed tonight is Kevin Campbell. Next pairing on the screen now, John Payne, the JP Racing Corvette. And uh, John Payne this time taking, taking on the Ford Custom line of Andrew Searle. Andrew Searle, big uh, 500 cubic inch engine up front of the Custom line for Acme Fiberglass and Acme Racing. And of course, uh, John Payne, the master of the wild bunch, you've got to say. He's been around since meeting one with this very car, the Corvette. Lights come down, he's got a big handicap start. Andrew Searle doesn't seem to be going anywhere. This is a John Payne benefit. Yeah, through he goes, 760 at 258 kilometres an hour. Doesn't matter whether it's top comp or wild bunch racing, mate, the JP Racing Corvette certainly seems to get the job done and uh, you're the man behind it all, of course. Well, yes, it's not only me, it's um, the sponsors have put the money in to keep it rolling. I've been racing this car for 10 years and it's still a winner. 
and we've got a new Corvette uh, on the go for the next year, the 63 Split Window Classic, and um, we'll probably be running that within the next year. But this one, you know, it's uh, been racing 10 years and it's won a lot of races and uh, I think I'll hang it in the ceiling. <laughs> Incredibly, both John Payne and Kevin Campbell have run close to their dial-ins than John Moll. They will be going to the final of Coca-Cola Bottlers Australian Wild Bunch titles, but uh, it ain't over yet in round two because these guys, Alfie Sabello in the uh, 850 BMW and Les Winter in the Winter Smash Repairs 55 Chevy, they've still got a run to do their thing. Yeah, this is really the race between the two panel shops. Uh, Winter Smash Repairs 55 but Chevy out of Brisbane taking on Alfie Sabello's Alfie's Prestige Panels BMW from Sydney. And uh, the presentations of both cars, you'd have to say, are absolutely superb. Sabello, uh, uh, I think he'd love to run this thing in top door slammer, but uh, that professional category uh, doesn't fit foreign uh, late model bodies. Les Winner, of course, was runner-up, as we mentioned earlier, at the Conica Winter Nationals in Top Door Slammer last year. Hasn't really uh, got into that mid-six-second zone that he'd need to so far, but he's really trying to work on the handling of this car. Green light for both competitors, and uh, Alfie Sabello's running pretty well. The, the uh, Chevy a little out of shape through. They go a breakout from Sabello. Since its inception, Willowbank Raceway has been known as an innovative track. Australian Wild Bunch Racing was born here and facilities such as the Three Amber Christmas Tree, Jet Track Dryer, Digital Display Boards and World Class Track Preparation were all Australian first here at Willowbank Raceway. Now one thing recognised by the raceway was the need to spread the word about drag racing and that happened even before the track was completed. Television shows weren't even dreamt of when Willowbank Raceway first went into print. The Elapsed Times was launched at the very first meeting and it's been produced four times a year ever since. It keeps races and fans abreast of all the happenings here at Willowbank Raceway, both on the track and behind the scenes. Now it's distributed free at the track, at speed shops, performance outlets and members of Wreckers Hotline. Alternatively, you can subscribe and for just $10 you'll receive five issues in the post. Now if you'd like to know more about receiving your copy of the Elapsed Times, just contact the Willowbank Raceway office or catch them on the internet on the Raceway's homepage. Hi, this is Victor Bray, driver of the Castrol 57 Chev Top Door Slammer and I hope I see you at the Conica Winter National. Australian Championship Series, it's guaranteed that every category of racing will be fantastic. However, there's no doubt that Top Fuel Eliminator will headline the show. As one of the strongest fields ever assembled here at Willowbank Raceway prepares for this event. Let's have a look at some of the contenders. Defending title holder Graham Cowan is returning and he'll be fighting to hang on to a slender lead that he's got in the series so far. And hot on his heels is American Glenn Micris and he'll be racing in Santo Rafasada's all-new dragster. Of course, the big news, Jim Reed is coming back to racing right here at Willowbank in his first appearance since he run it up right here at the Conical Winter Nationals last year. He's landed all-new gear and he's out to turn last year's runner-up into this year's victory. As for that 300 mile an hour barrier, well, we've been talking about it a lot and every team that I've mentioned so far is capable of the breakthrough. And we can now add another team and that's the DeFilippo Racing Team, as Charlie DeFilippo ran 4.85 seconds at nearly 298 mile an hour recently at Calder Park. Robin Kirby, well he has a 5.0 second pass under his belt and we're expecting him to take the Pennzoil Dragster into the fours right here at the Winters. Now add to this lineup Terry Sainty and Roy Smith in their Australian powered Dragsters and hopefully Romeo Capitanio in the Sid Crame entry and you can see why all eyes will be transfixed to Top Fuel Eliminator here at the Conical Winter Nationals in June. Another category that's going to be incredibly tough at the Conical Winter Nats, of course, will be Pro Stock Eliminator. Around 16 cars trying to get in, into an eight car field there. Right now we've got four cars. 
trying to become two for the final. Craig Haystead in the Craig R Performance Ford Thunderbird and of course Kim Petterward in the uh, Lifestyle Camaro. These guys head to head. Yeah, so the Wreckers Hotline Pro Stock Invitational, a lot of interest here tonight. Many of these guys taking the opportunity, of course, for the Winter Nationals to do a bit of tuning under the cooler conditions. Away we go, green light there, Haystead. Uh, Kim Petterwood having a few problems here tonight, but uh, Craig Haystead winds it up. Through he goes, 782, 274 kilometres an hour. Craig Haystead, you better start smiling. 782 at 171 mile an hour, but half track 139 mile an hour, personal best mate. The Craig uh, Thunderbird really starting to hit its straps. Yeah, we've been trying real hard today. The, the start line's been really tricky all day. Um, it's good to see the, the mid track coming up, but uh, we got uh, Rob Tucker in the final and he's a tough man, so uh, we've got some more work to do, but we'll be there. What do you So, John O'Carney, the John William Auto Sales. Pontiac taking on Rob Tucker and uh, Rob of course the uh, performance wholesale Oldsmobile currently leading Rob in the Australian Drag Racing Championship. That he certainly is and you can see what uh, Craig Haystead thinks this race hasn't even run yet and he's already saying I'm up against Tucker. I think John O'Carney would like to have something to say about that to be quite frank but uh, obviously with a 45 point uh, lead in the championship you'd say Tucker's the man to beat here. O'Carney, number two in the country last year. He's got the potential for an upset, but not now. Red light. Tucker will be going into the final. 782 from Haystead. What's Tucker going to reply with? 782. This is going to be a killer final. Rob Tucker, 782, 173 on that pass. Craig Haystead just ran 782. It's going to be an absolute pearler of a final. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, who's got lane choice, any idea? We're just trying to work that out right now, but uh, both 782s and uh, 7.8 second uh, local pro stockers, it's a treat to see, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's really good. Craig's going very well, and um, we're just trying to sort of just keep ahead of him, so you know it's going to be a really good final. So semi-final time now on the Kenlo Race Car Super Eliminator, and a run through on a fire run this time will be David Goldie. Goldie's done so well in this Pacific Performance uh, Monaro. Runs it in Super Gas at some events, Super Sedan, and of course, uh, Kenlo Race Car Super Eliminator at these events. 991, so close to his dial in, 196 kilometres an hour. Kenlo Race Cars Super Eliminator, you're there again, mate. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's been hard racing so far. Um, we'll have to see how we go in the final, I suppose. We'll see how we get in a minute. So. 54 cars or 55 cars I think in the uh, for the first round of eliminations mate uh, to take this one off is really uh, going to be a, a an award in itself. Well it'll be great if we can, uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens, um, hopefully our luck will be on our side. So uh, who will he race in the final? The winner of the next pairing Cameron Hill the rookie and the 350 Chevy powered Holden Tirana taking on Jason Grimmer in the Jaguar. I mean, this really is incredible. Jason Grimmer, um, he's won so many events, it's not funny. The Australian Super Sedan champion, he goes to, he's from Sydney. He goes to Darwin, uh, to uh, Adelaide to race, to Townsville to race. Here he is at Willowbank Raceway, up against a rookie, Cameron Hill. Hill comes out strong. Here comes the big rat and the cat, a big block J uh, Chevy in the Jaguar. Grimmer's got him, I think. Grimmer's on strong. Grimmer breaks out, three thousandths of a second too quick. Cameron Hill for the final. With uh, no prior big meeting experience and you're into the final of Kenlo Race Cars Super Eliminator. Unbelievable, I can't believe it mate. Did our licensing passes this morning and uh, we just can't believe it. So the first of our finals coming up now, the performance wholesale Lanati Junior drags the final. Mark Allen and the Knight family dragster taking on Kerry Ann Adams in the Breeks dragster. Kerry Ann in the near lane, Mark uh, Allen over there in the uh, far lane, not much a handicap start in this one. Allen in front, here comes Adams, Kerry Ann pushing on strong, they only run over eighth of a mile, half track. Kerry Ann Adams wins it with a 9.99. Next final now is Pipe Masters Motorcycle Exhaust Modified Bike, we had a big field, the final now between Dale Mason on the Suzuki and Trevor Sage on the Yamaha. Great racing in this category and we must thank Pipe Masters Motorcycle Exhaust of Allison Street at Maine for all of the support of the category. Trevor Sage has uh, well been almost unbeatable late in the season. He's got a big lead here and I'm not sure that uh, Dale Mason's going to be able to catch him. Through he goes, Trevor Sage, 11.50, 179 kilometres an hour for the win. 
Superformance Super Street Eliminator and two of the big names in that category. Ross Munster, the series leader in the uh, Holden and Gavin Hamilton in the Tirana and uh, clean greens on both sides of the racetrack. Ross Munster in front, Hamilton trying to chase him down in the Tirana. Munster gets it by a wheel. 12-1-0, he's a winner tonight. So the final coming up now of Kenlo Racecar Super Eliminator and uh, the pairing there are David Goldie and Cameron Hill and you know Rob it's amazing really uh, Cameron Hill at his very first race meeting uh, we've got races out here Rob been running with us here for the last 13 years and never made a final. Well there were 62 of four by the wayside in this category this is the final two left Dave Goldie in the Monaro, Cameron Hill in the Tirana. Can the fairy tale come true? I don't know. Goldie looked pretty sharp off the lights there. This is going to be very tight across the line. Pick a winner, and it's Cameron Hill, 10 1 6, 210 kilometres an hour. <laughs> Cameron Hill. Rookie, got your licence this morning. The winner of Ken Lowe's Super, uh, Super Eliminator. Mate, how do you feel? I've never, ever felt better. Praise the Lord, that is unbelievable. 10.05? 10.05. 64 thousandths of a second, the margin of victory. Oh, I didn't even see him. Didn't even see him, just kept straight ahead. I didn't see him. It was just an absolute perfect run. I'd like to thank Performance for the engine work and everything. And um, my partner, who owns the car, Larry, my partner in the car, I just can't believe it. Unbelievable. Well, this is really what pro stock racing is all about. Craig Hasted, two wins, and his second run is 782, followed very closely by Rob Tucker, two wins also, and you guessed it, a 782. Who's going to take out the final? Well, I'd hate to be a betting man because I'd be keeping my money in my pocket. Well, Rob Tucker got hot, got the uh, lane choice by four thousandths of a second. That's all there was, the difference between the two cars in the second round. Craig Haystead in the Craig R Performance, Philip Usher Constructions, Ford Thunderbird, up against the uh, Performance Wholesale Oldsmobile of Rob Tucker, and the uh, start line crew having a look underneath. Well, we'll wait and see what, yeah, what's the, the signal problem? there. The signal was come on forward, all's okay, so we've got a race. Tucker up against Haystead. Hey, we've been waiting for this one. Yeah, some people are predicting that this could be the same final at the Winter Nationals. We'll wait and see. Haystead's going well. Haystead had a big hole shot advantage over Tucker. Tucker's got more top speed. Haystead, his first ever pro stock win. Yeah, a personal best that time for uh, Craig Haystead. The crew are pretty happy, and uh, so they should be. Uh, Craig Haystead's having a good end of the season here. Here's the action now on the replay. Yeah, big hole shot by uh, Haystead. He got the Thunderbird out in front. Then you see there's a big top end charge from Rob Tucker and the performance wholesale Oldsmobile. But Haystead, 780, that is really quick. Craig Haystead, you've never won a pro stock meeting before, but the Wreckers Hotline Invitational Pro Stock Meeting, personal best 780 in the final against Rob Tucker. Well, it feels good. We've been trying really, really hard. The amount of effort we've put in lately is uh, it's sort of a just reserve, you know. The guys, everyone's put a big effort in the Craig Out Performance, Usher Constructions car, so we're really happy. This is it now, the final, the Coca-Cola Australian Wild Bunch title. Started off with a big field down to the last two. Kevin Campbell in the 34 Ford, taking on John Payne, the JP Racing Chevy Corvette. Once again, there won't be much of a handicap start in this one. Both guys are nominating uh, dial-ins almost the same. Uh, the difference, of course, is that this hot rod of Bob Scott's, just a little small block Chevrolet engine. And uh, over there for the GDM Wreckers JP Racing Corvette of John Payne, that is a very large aluminium big block Chevrolet of, I think, uh, very close to 500 cubic inches. So the engine doesn't have to work as hard to produce the same sort of results. 
keep an eye on this pair off the start line, it should be good. Yeah, away they go, and oh, the 34's a little out of shape there. Oh, you can't give that start to John Payne. John Payne pulls the shoot nice and early. 774, 215 kilometres an hour for the win. The crew say, what happened there? Have a look at this from behind. The car left hard, headed for the centre line, got out of shape. It has left the line very hard, but want for the centre line. Look at the air under the back tyre. You can't win a race that way. I think I'll say it this way. Coca-Cola the sponsor, Wild Bunch the race, John Payne the winner. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Mate, Kevin Kev a little bit out of shape in the final, but uh, the vet straight as a die, as usual, as we were talking about before. And uh, congratulations on your win. Well, thanks very much, and um, good to see us back in the winner's circle again. And um, I'd like to thank my sponsors, JP Racing and Burner Magnetos and GDM Wreckers and all the others who keep us going where we are. Great result there for John Payne, the first ever Australian Wild Bunch title holder. But uh, now it is time for Frank Gafiro and the Bandag Bullet. He's driven all the way down to the finish line. You think he's got something different in store here? Well, that's one way to do a U-turn from Frank Gafiro. Spins it round, gets lined up, and he is coming back at the crowd. Around 5,000 here for the Coca-Cola Australian Wild Bunch titles at Willowbank Raceway. And uh, what Frank said was when I do a burnout, they all, all I get to see is the smoke from behind. I want to do one from the braking area and show them what it looks like front on. And we know that. We've seen it on the Wreckers Hotline Drag Racing 98 cameras. It is just awesome. Yeah, this is certainly a first here tonight at Willowbank Raceway. We've never seen a vehicle do this uh, coming back up the strip. Look at the power there. Look at the smoke. The fans go crazy as he spins it around. <laughs> Frank Gafiro, a fantastic showman in the Bandag Bullet. Well, it has been a wonderful first ever Australian uh, Wild Bunch titles brought to us by Coca-Cola. If you want to know more about Willowbank Raceway, have a look on the internet. The address was on screen there. And of course, the next event here is the Conica Winter Nationals. We'll be bringing you plenty of action from that in upcoming episodes of Wreckers Hotline Drag Racing 98. <laughs> Put the 